Welcome to HortTube, where we talk all things gardening. My name is Jim Putnam, and this is a Temple Bells Pieris. This is Temple Bells Pieris, an early season white flowering evergreen shrub with beautiful new red foliage. Temple Bells Pieris can reach four to six feet in height and four to six feet in width but would be very easy to keep it smaller than that. You could probably maintain this plant in the three to four foot height range almost permanently. Temple Bells is definitely hardy in zone six to nine. Uh, Mountain Fire Pieris, I know will go up into zone five and even zone four B, but from what I understand, Temple Bells is not as cold hardy. Temple Bells will not be particularly fast growing. I doubt you'd get six inches of growth on these in a single season. Most of the growth will come out in the spring once it gets very, very hot in the summer, they won't do a lot of additional growing. In terms of sun or shade on Pieris, I think the further you go north, if you're in zones five or six, uh, that's the areas in which you're going to be able to put this in quite a bit more sun. As you come further south than that into zone seven or eight, uh, definitely this is a part shade shrub. If we put these out in full sun in my area in zone 7b, they'll definitely cook. There are a lot of different uses for temple bells. It could definitely be used as a foundation plant. It's a great little evergreen shrub uh, for that type of situation. It looks fantastic mass planted. Uh, the red new foliage during the growing season is fantastic. And if you put something darker green behind it, it really makes it stand out more. It also makes a great container plant. You just have to make sure whatever soil media you use in the container is very well drained. If you put this in potting soil, you're almost certainly gonna kill it. Temple Bells has these amazing bell-shaped flowers in the early spring. And then after those are finished, it's quickly followed by this bright red new foliage. This got burned here on a late frost. The flowers were unaffected by the frost for the most part, but it had tried to leaf out a little bit too early. But after these flowers are gone, it'll quickly fill that new foliage back in and it's quite striking. So this is a plant that you'll get a very long period of time where it's doing something interesting. And then of course it's evergreen. I've included videos in the description of this video for planting woody shrubs. Pieris definitely goes into the category of needs well-drained soil. If you have clay-based soils, you're definitely gonna want to amend it with some pine bark soil conditioner, something that will drain uh, so, uh, water away. Never use potting soil or peat moss uh, with this plant. You definitely don't want anything that's gonna wick up water and hold water in place. For the first year after you plant your Pieris, you're definitely gonna wanna keep a close eye on the watering. And if it gets dry, you can really drown these, but then let it dry out. That's very important. This is not a plant for an automated irrigation system at all, because if you were to get several rains in a week and your irrigation system continued to run, this is definitely a plant that you can give root rot to very easily. Once it's established, these are pretty drought tolerant, and this is a good plant for letting you know when it's dry. Uh, the tender new growth on the top of it will definitely wilt. Uh, this is one that will alert me when it needs water. Uh, a lot of plants don't. They just start losing leaves, or the conifers are particularly bad for that, for just browning out completely. But this plant will let you know, and when it needs water, just completely drown the space around it. I would fertilize Pieris in the spring. Typically I'm fertilizing in late winter, or early spring. This is a plant that will respond to that fertilizer probably too early if you put it out in February or March. So I'd probably wait until you're almost at your frost free date and then fertilize the Pieris. And then all the new growth that comes out on it is that rich red color uh, for most of the spring and early summer. So you'll get more of that by fertilizing it. Just wait a little longer than some other things. If your Pieris needs pruning, just wait till after it blooms in the early to mid spring. This is not a plant that I would go after very, very hard. I'd put this in the kind of the Daphne category. I'm a little scared of these, honestly, uh, in terms of pruning them hard. But if you need to shape it up, take a limb off here or there, that would be the time to do it. We really don't get a lot of insect problems on Pieris. There's rarely anything chewing on them, and that includes deer. They are considered deer resistant. The one thing that will definitely kill this plant is poorly drained soil. Like I said, you definitely want to mound this plant up a little bit. Make sure that the soil is going to drain well. Don't over mulch it. Uh, that is the main killer of these. So what are you waiting for? Even you can grow the beautiful white flowering, red new foliage, evergreen, cold hardy Temple Bells Pieris. Thank you for watching my video, and if it was helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for future videos. Also, comment below with any questions you have about Pieris. Thanks again.